Today on MB Vintage Sliders, we're going to get old 12.3 Wobbly back up and running. So this is wobbly. I call it wobbly because it's a uh, it doesn't handle very good. <laughs> it's uh, had the steering's been broke apart in every direction and been welded back together. It's just a it's just a hodge, hodgepodge of stuff put together. It's a 1970 12 3. It has a 73 340 in it, and uh, it runs relatively well. Until I got at it. <laughs> and uh, I'll give you a little little story about it. A few years ago, they were having some races. 660 foot drag races. And they had a vintage class. And I said, I got the machine for her. And uh, I, this was in the middle of the week. And I said, well, maybe I'll go. Maybe I won't. I ended up going. It was a Thursday afternoon, like late afternoon. I decided, you know what? I'm going to go. So I pulled it in the shop and got it running, went through with carburetor and yada, yada, yada. Run pretty good. I mean, it's pretty fast, but not for 660. You know, it, it would go really fast in 150 feet, and then you were at top speed, and that's where you sat. So I was like, well, I don't have much time to do anything. But I did have enough time. Fabbed up some noisemakers. They do absolutely nothing for performance. If anything, it maybe made it work worse. But it really sounded like it's going to tear the world right apart. And uh, being a 73, I'm still running the HR carburetor because it's not a TNT engine or nothing. It's still a small carb. And uh, it has a fixed jet in it. Well, after I put the pipes on it, when you went wide open throttle from a dead stop, it didn't like it. So... There I was, zero test time because, you know, time I spent to build the noisemakers, because I'm not going to really call them pipes. And uh, went to the event. There was probably a dozen old sleds there that were with, fall within the classes we was in. And uh, went up, light turned green, pinned her, and there she sat. Didn't even move. Anyway, she, uh, she did not like the fuel mixture. So since then... I've got a different carburetor on it that I can now adjust the high-speed jet, which it runs way better now. But it was still not very fast. So I took and re-geared it. It has the original chain case in it still. And someone's offset the motor using bracketry, re-drilled it so that you don't have to have the spacer in your chain case or nothing like that. And... Uh, I went from a 10 tooth in the top gear to a 13, and now it's pretty fast, but I've lost a lot on the bottom end. So we're going to get this up and running. I got some different springs to play with in the clutch. We're going to try and get it so that it'll come out of the hole a little better than it is. And I'll bring you along with us and show you. Well. We're going to start with uh, taking the carburetor off, I guess. She's a little cold here in the building. But... Oh, return does not want to come off. We'll see. The diaphragms, but... It was a new kit late, late last year, so. But it wasn't a new, new uh, needle and seed in it. I've uh, never really had an issue with it sticking, but these old carburetors and they sit all summer, and the, this little building that's in, I assume it gets quite warm in here, so it's not like the. Ones that stay in a temperature controlled environment. 
It's all right. We'll just do her the hard way. Gravity's working. Never fails when you're trying this. That's going to run right out of there. Take the whole stack right off. <laughs> She's got junk in her. I'll bring that up so you can see. So, I ain't gonna focus. To, but anyway, right there is some garbage. She is a failed diaphragm split right open. Luckily, I do have a cat here. So, I guess we're gonna be. Putting that in too. Good thing that we took it apart. It's all right. Oh, we gotta hook this back up. And I undid that, but I'll tighten that back up. Well, there. I guess we'll try it. And see what happens. So, to remove the clutch, with this little stiffer spring here, it's not a lot stiffer, but I'm just trying to get my clutch engagement up so I can leave out of the hole a little better. Take your spark plug out, put a piece of rope down your spark plug hole, wind her back, and then just crank her out. I already broke it free. So we'll take that apart, switch the spring real quick, turn her back the other way, and uh, see what's gonna happen here, I guess. A little cold on the fingers this morning. Watch out. It looks all right for wore out like it is. <laughs> and I guess I'm gonna have to loosen some motor mounts to get it out of there. Well, I got it all together. It's running. It's actually running the best it's ever run. And uh, still, it's not a it's not a speed machine by no means, but uh, it's had a little bit of regearing. I got a different spring in the clutch, which helped me a lot for coming out of the hole. And uh, it makes lots of noise. So I'm not 100% sure that the carburetor's working just perfect yet, but it seems to it seems to be taking its fuel. So like I said she's just a hodgepodge of parts, but we'll try her out next weekend and see how we make out.
Well, we got the race in. It was a pretty good success, or I feel it was for me. She left the line. Still not very fast, but it's faster than it was. It completed its pass, drove on the trailer, off the trailer, and drove back in the shed. So, I'm not done with it yet. I mean, you can only make a, a bubble nose so fast. But I still think there's more yet. So, I think we'll give her one more shot next year. And, uh, and see how we make out. I got, uh, it was alright. I mean, I'm pretty happy with it for what it is. Everything off the line's working great. I just got to get some more of the top end out of it. And I think that's doable. So, my ski roll run great. First time I've ever really run it like that, I guess. I mean, I drove it around a little bit. But, you know, you get a nice flat surface to really open her up on. It's fast. Even I was a little bit surprised. Now, they didn't really have a class for it, which I knew that before I went. But I had another guy that was coming, that you'll see in the video, that had the Moto Ski Grand Prix, and it had a 340 single in it. We didn't really want to put the singles up into the twin class, because, I mean, it's just it's not remotely competitive, right? But uh, and we were really hoping we'd have a good straight line race between him. Because we've always wondered how comparable the Saks would be to the Hearth. I mean, it's a 194 Hearth, but I got the SS300, 293, I guess, Saks, which was, and they're both pretty comparable. But his started falling on the top end, and I took it for a spin after we rolled off, and he was thinking it was a carburetor problem, but I really think it was it was fire issue. I think it was failing in the advance. So whether it be the condenser possibly, or maybe just a spark plug even could do that, right? So, but it could be the points. So he's going to dig into it and see, because it would have been a really good race, because they're both pretty equal machines for power, right? Both HD sleds. So we'll try next year, like I say. I don't think I'm done with this yet. I, uh, I think I can get a little more out of it. So... And it's just an Olympic 340, and I think I have found a TNT 340. I mean, they're not a big, big difference in power. But, I mean, that would definitely help, too. So, we'll see where it goes, and try her again next year.